Don't you ever wonder what that your spawn lists thing is for? And don't you ever wonder if you could ever organize all of your add-ons when you've got 10,000 billion like I do? What have I done with my life? Hey peeps, Pickle Succeed here on a tutorial to help you organize your add-ons in a better way than what people usually do when they have a billion add-ons in this add-ons thing here. Like, jeez. And I know lots of people like to download a lot of stuff, so I'm pretty sure I'm going to be able to help you with this all out here. So how do you create a spawn list? And how do you actually create something that could actually be organized for something, you know, for your actual things? Well, I've got created a ton of stuff here, so let me just, uh, you know, minimize all of it so that I can create another uh, spawn list for this tutorial's purpose, because, you know, you don't really know how to do this stuff. So... It's not that hard. Um, press new category. Right click your spawn list and press new category. And I'm going to scroll, scroll down, find it. Yep, here we go. New category. Now edit and call it whatever the hell you want. I'm going to call it two. So anyway, I've created a spawn list called tutorial and I've dragged it up. You can drag them up like so. I'm going to drag it up like so. Blah, blah, blah. So... Spawn lists. Now, this isn't a hard thing to do at all. So I'm going to show you uh, an add-on that I have yet to organize. This is an add-on that I've actually uploaded onto the workshop myself. Yes, whether this works with any add-on. Uh, I'm just going to scroll down. Okay, here we go. Now, this isn't this isn't something people normally get used to. So I'm just going to scroll down, scroll up to the top. Now. To put something in a spawn list, it's actually not the most easiest thing to, no to notice at first glance, but once you get the hang of it, it's absolutely easy. Scroll up to the spawn list, where your spawn list is. I know my spawn list is right here, so you have to scroll up to where you can see its name. Now, click and hold your add-on. Your add-on has to be, you have to at least see the icon of your add-on. So as you can see, I can move it anywhere in this, but that wouldn't be a good idea now, would it? So, because it doesn't work. Um, so press, so go to, so click and hold it, and go to tutorial, or whatever the hell you've named your thing. You have to drag it over it, so you can see that it, the name's highlighted in blue. Now, as you can see, I'm about to drag it in here. Notice this little pink line that appears? Make sure that pink line's there. And then let go of the mouse with your add-on. And as you can see, my add-on's there. Woohoo! Now, if you've got a billion add-ons like me, I don't expect you to be adding singular every single model into the thing on its own because you've got a billion and that would just waste time. There's an easier way to do this. And especially if you're going to be doing this for multiple add-ons, it's a more viable opportunity to do so. Now don't attempt this from the left because uh, you, you're either going to select an add-on or you're just going to be dragging this thing. And it doesn't work. I've already tested it out. So from the right or where there's a vacant space in the add-on, like down here, can you notice that I'm drawing a little pink box? It's kind of like what you do in Windows when you mess around on the desktop. Point being, this is, this is an add-on selector and it can select multiple add-ons at once under a circumstance that it must be square. The selection must be of a square or a rectangle. So as you can see, if I wanted to select this, this, or this, I have to select all six of them to do that. I, I can only do things like this, or rows, or double row. Point being, I can't select anything that isn't a square, because that's how the selector works. It just doesn't um, like that. So... I'm going to select this row, attempt this from the right or from a vacant spot. I'm going to show you here where there's a vacant spot. There's a vacant spot usually below if there's no add-ons where that is. So I'm just going to go back to my thing. I'm going to select this row and I'm going to drag up. I'm going to click and hold and all of them are going to be selected. Go over tutorial, drag in here. Now, there won't be a pink space up there anymore. It'll be a pink space either here or here. It's still exactly the same thing. So press this, and voila, they're all there. Woohoo! Now we've got 
an add-on in a th in like you know. So let's scroll down, and usually, if you're going to be selecting multiple add-ons, you're probably going to want to select the entire thing, which isn't a hard thing to do at all. So if you've got lots of add-ons in a particular model thing, and I know some model packs that do, click, hold the select thing so you can see the pink thing, and then scroll and hold. Make sure you don't let go, unless you know you want, you want to let go of that specific point. Click and hold, and I'm going to drag all the way to the bottom, and all of them should be selected. Scroll up, I'm going to go to Tutorial, drag over, and press that. Press save changes anytime you make any kind of major change. You need that save change button to be gone. I don't want to see people... I pe you, you have to keep it updated. An easier way to do this is with um, the text versions of these, because fun fact, spawn lists are actually text documents. Yeah. So... And also, let me tell you something, everything that you get is a singular item, which is fine, but you can't duplicate it if you want a body group. So, like, you can't drag something else or right-click and say, oh my god, I've got, a, I've got a second one with a body group. No, you've got to go back to it, get it from the add-on, and drag it to the spawn list with the body group. Now, how do you do that? I'm going to get something with the body group. I'm going to go to the Enhanced Splatoon Ragdoll Pack, because that's fun. Okay, um, it's in E, not down below. E. There they are. Now, I'm going to select the Inkling Girl, and I'm going to right-click and press Edit Icon. Now, as you can see, she's staring at me. She's actually T-posed. So, now press whatever body group it is that you want it to have. I'm going to press skin 9, where it's all ink-based, and <laughs> um, press render. It should already be rendering for you. I don't, re I don't really care. And then click, wait, click, drag, hold. Rinse and repeat for every body group if you feel you need every body group of the specific add-on. I'm going to delete it because I don't need this now. Press save changes every time you make a major change. Now under any circumstance, and I mean any circumstance, the spawn list will only update whatever is in it if you press save changes under any circumstance, unless you're editing the text document. Which means that if whoever's creating the add-on, the model pack, has updated the model since you last updated your spawn list, so say, if I put these in now, and then I updated this add-on to later edit, say, the spider Robloxian model to have something that changed the model in the add-on, your model simply will not appear and there will be no error sign to show you that it has been updated. So, let me show you something. In my add-ons legacy folder, I have another enhanced Splatoon Ragdoll pack. This is an older version from when I was um, extracting textures from it to see if I could edit them before the update arrived where they had better tent physics. If I, if the actual versions of these that were on the workshop were still in a spawn list that I had created, they simply would not appear. Your models have to be updated in order for them to appear in when you've pressed the spawn list version at all. So if I've pressed this here, this is the most updated version of the add-on, therefore the Inkling Boy will appear. It simply, there will be no indication, see, notice this console here? There will be nothing here to tell you that the add-on, that the add-on that you've put in there refused to load. 
not even like a model missing or anything like that. It simply will not tell you. So you have to keep on your toes as to what up add-ons get updated and what ones are in your spawn lists. Which may be a downside to using this because you have to update it every time a major update comes along. That is a major update that prevents the previous version from spawning. Sometimes when model update is update and add-on, you don't really need to edit anything because they usually focus on the new models or something like that. But if it's a but if it's say a replacement, then yeah, you have to you have to actually go in and redrag everything. So let me just um. Let me just um, show you an add-on that may not appear in the future. These. This was a pack that someone made back when the models did of the um, weapons of Splatoon didn't actually make it onto the workshop yet. This was someone's attempt at creating these models, and yes, they suck. I'm not even kidding, they suck. I only have this for preservation purposes, if they're even worth preserving at all. Point is, if this add-on wasn't updated, if someone deleted this, then, and I still had it in a spawn list, it would not appear. There won't be a red error sign, there won't be a model with missing textures, nothing will happen. No model will spawn, it just won't appear. And nothing will say anything like, oh god, the model didn't spawn. That's when you know you actually have to go and update it. Now I'm going to show you the circumstance under which you can edit things. So then you can do something like this. I'm going to show you my Animal Crossing ragdolls. I've got them for some reason. Yes, I do. I've got a whole bunch of animals in here. And all of them have got body groups. Better example would be the wolf ones. I'm going to do this wolf and this wolf. Now I didn't individually press edit icon on each of them because that would be a very long time span. I don't know Animal Crossing names. So if you guys know who these two are, that's cool. Uh, I just subbed to them because they looked cute. And you know, they're cute and I like cutesy things. Anyway... The fact is that these guys had body groups, and I wanted the body groups as well to be in the in the thing. Only problem was, there's so many of them that getting body groups of them would be ridiculous for every single one to drag them individually. Because, see with the, see with this, I'm going to show you one of the Animal Crossing ones. This is the original pack. See, you can edit the icon like, say, press skin 13 for this, and then press skin 13 for this, and you can just drag like that, and that would happen, and you can drag it over, and that would work. But I just simply didn't want to do that for every single one. So there is a better way you can actually edit body groups of an add-on. So long as you've dragged one already, so then you know what the format is, so then you can actually drag them across properly. Because, as you can see, this one has skin 13, but there's eyes and a mouth too. And you might want those. I don't, but you could. So I'll show you what I used to get the Animal Crossing ones all in a spawn list. So I'm in my Gary's mod folder, and this is where most of the stuff for your Gmod thing even occurs. You, you should be at Gary's mod, Gary's mod, so press settings, and press spawn list. These are all of your spawn lists. Every single, every single spawn list I've ever created has been in here, and they don't even take up that much space because they're text documents, and that's wonderful, isn't it? Gmod doesn't have to load all that much when it starts up. Yay! So, 
I'm going to find my Animal Crossing one because that was the one I used to get all of the animals in there. So here it is. I'm going to press Edit, Their Text Documents. And notice how it's just all code. Isn't it wonderful? Now I'd like you to take a look at this one. At these two actually. Notice how they're exactly the same model. The type is a model. It should always be a model. The model should be the model wherever the model is. You don't have to worry about these two. Skin is what you're concerned about. If you want to do this, then you have to edit the skin and make sure it's the proper skin that you're actually going to have. So skin 1 or 2. Notice how when there's no skin, there's nothing there. So you don't just press skin 0. It just doesn't, the skin just isn't there. Now notice how this has 4, 5 and 6. That's their placement in the spawn list. That's a simpler way of getting add-ons with body groups inside an add-on easier because what I did was I copy-pasted the bird MDL because it's the exact same fi file model. I copy-pasted this and changed the skin and the ID of the placement because you can't have two things in space 5. One thing has to be in space 5, one has to be in 6, one has to be in 7, etc, etc, etc. So I just copy pasted this and changed the skin and the ID. So then it would be in place 6, but it has skin 2. It's in place 7, but it has skin 3. It's in place 9, but it has skin 5. And rinse and repeat until you've got all of them done. And then I moved on to the next one. So I moved on to Blanca. Or Blancer. I'm not sure how you say that. Don't kill me. Where this has none, but this has skin 1, this is skin 2, this is skin 3, this is in place 15, this is in place 16, this is in place 17. That's another way to get add-ons into um, a spawn list. Make sure you have the spawn list already created though, and make sure you already have one in there, so then you're not blindly typing in something that could eventually lead to a broken model. That wouldn't be good now, would it? Yeah. To save this, because it actually works, you need to restart Gmod first off, so then it will actually work. Then you can go up and press File Save. And that should hopefully put the spawn list in Gmod in a simpler fashion if you're going to be using multiple body groups like with the Animal Crossing ones here. So yeah, see y'all, have a good day, peace, and that's how you make a spawn list for Gary's Mod or, you know, edit, editing and making a spawn list for Gary's Mod to organize your add-ons from the workshop. So, see you in the next tutorial and I'll See you then.